All right. Right, I talked about CFC error detection system. Thank you, guys. A few points I want to mention about CFC. Remember, we said if you're given a problem in CFC as a sender or as a receiver, you need to agree on some value that we call the generator. So if you have if you have some data that you need to transfer as a sender, and if you are given a generator value, let's say the following generator value one one zero one. knows what the first step is. Usually it involves dividing your data by the generator. We call this the generator. That's the one that will generate the CFC that goes in the file, that goes with the frame or the packet. First step, you know your data, you know your generator. Second step is to append zeros to the end of the message. How many zeros will I append here? In this, there's always one less than the length of the or the number of bits in the generator. The generator here has four, then three. So you need to append three zeros. And then you start the division. Okay, I'm going to do it pretty quick. Remember, it's XOR, it's not division. All you have to do is take this value, stick it underneath this one. So you need four bits, in this case, to carry on. And then you do an XOR. XOR, if they are the same, it's zero. And if they are different, it's one. Cross off, remove off any zeros on the left, so they won't mix you up. So now we only have two bits. We need to bring down the next two bits. That's one and a zero. And then bring down same generator again, one, one, zero, one. And that gives us pretty much the same values, zero, zero, one, one. Cross over the zeros. We need to bring down two more bits. And that's exactly the same. So it will go again, one, one, zero, one. And that gives us one, one with zero, zeros here. And we cross them over. We need, we need to bring down the next two bits, that's zero, zero, and that's one, one, zero, one, and, and that gives us, so that's the remainder, and it's also the complement, and that's what we call the CFC, or the frame check sequence, but now, when we send the frame, that's the original frame, that's one, 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 zero, one, zero, one, and we have to append some, some more bits to it. What bits? What value bits? What will I put here behind the frame? The remainder is 0, 0, 0, 1. What will go in here? Any idea? Any idea? <clears throat> 0, 1. Why 0, 1? Why 0, 0, 1? Because there has to be one less than the length of the generator, always. So 
you need to pad it with zeros. So the length of the generator is four, then we, the CRC appended to the end is one less than the generator. And if you don't have values, pad them with zeros. Zeros on the left are of no value, but now you need to pad them. So that's the frame that leaves. Now, there are two things that you need to know about the generator, this generator and any other generator. It has a condition. It must start with one on the left and ends with one. So it has two conditions for requirements for any generator. It must start with the bit one and ends with bit one. So you cannot have a generator one one zero one zero. That's not good because it ends with zero. That's no good. One one zero 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 one. That's a good generator. Okay. So as long as it ends with one, that's okay. It starts with one, and you can't have a generator like this one zero one one zero one one. That's a bad generator. Why? Because it starts with the zero. You can't have this generator either. Because it ends with zero. You can have this generator. That's a good one. It starts with one and ends with one. Okay, so that's one condition of the generator. The second condition, it must be shorter in length. than the message, the frame. So you can't have a very short message, shorter than the generator, and try to run, you know, CRC, it doesn't work. So the generator that you divide by has to be smaller or shorter than the message you wanna send. Normally that, that's the case. You're always gonna send a frame, a frame of maybe a thousand bytes or 3000 bytes. Now the generator is no more than two bytes normally. So, but just so you know, if you if you try and do a little experiment at home and study it, and you have four bits here and your generator is six bit, it will not give you good results. So that's these are the two conditions for the generator and CRC. Now, yeah. Why we have the three zeros at that? What? Three zeros at that. The message. In the message, what's the question? Why are three zeros? Why are we have? You, you need to add them to start the operation. You have to put zero just to carry on. That's the, the condition for it. And they have to be why three? Because it, they have to be one less than the length of the generator. In this case, our generator has four bits. That means it's three. If it's five, then we have to add If the generator is six bits, then they have to put five zeros. If the generator is 12 bits, then you have to put 11 zeros. Always one less than the generator. Why is this room? Why? For the division operation to work correctly and have a remainder at the end. It's the way it's done. Right. So that's one thing about the generator. The gener there's another point about the generator that in an exam or in reality or when you're working in a network and you ask a network for the generator, they don't send you along a string of bits of ones and zeros. That's format, that's a binary format. They send it in some other format, it's called polynomial. So when you ask them for a generator, they give it to you in a polynomial format. What does polynomial format mean? It means it's written like this. They tell you it's x to the power of 5 plus to x to the power of 3 plus x plus 1. This is, the poly this is a polynomial format. So you need to translate this, convert this into binary. How do you convert this into binary? You start with the largest power that you have and convert it into one. So you say that largest power is one and the one on the right is also the one on the right. Now, 
You have to go down. What's after in sequence? What's after x to the power of five comes x to the power of four. It's not written there. If it's not written there, that means it's a zero. So they only tell you about the one bits. You have to create the zero bits yourself. So what's after x to the power of four? So x, x to the power of three, it's already there. Then you write one. Then it's x squared. It's not there. Then if you put a zero. Then x to the power of one, it's there. And then that's x to the power of zero, but they write it in one. So this is the translation of this. That's polynomial, that's binary format. You understand this? Okay, good, nice. So what about this one? Look x to the power of 4 plus 1. Can you convert this into binary, please? Thank you, thank you. I have a volunteer here. Yes? 1, 0, 0, 0, another 0, 1. Perfect. Okay. So this is the translation of x to the power of 4. So that one represents x to the power of 4. And then we have, we should have x to the power of 3. It's not there. So this represents x to the power of 3. This represents x to the power of 2. This represents x to the power of 1. And finally, x to the power of 0 is the last one. So that's polynomial and that's binary. So even in an exam, you'll be given your generator in polynomial format. Okay, is that okay? You are provided with it, and if you if you are programming, then you need to ask the network, um, you know, manager, for what is that. The network administrator will have that value. When you join a network, they'll tell you. Any network you join, they'll tell you, here's our uh, polynomial. This is our generator. They give it to you in polynomial format. It's a standard one. They, they have a standard. They have international standard. And they have mathematicians who sat down to find out what's the, what are the good polynomials or what are the good generators. And they found out. You know, the best generators that give the best results are certain numbers, and they have them in inter international standard. There are only two or three of them, so every network picks one, and that's the one that uses. All, probably everybody in the world almost use the same generator. It's not a secretive number, but it's a number that you need to know. Okay, how do you translate this? What does this into binary? One. Zero, 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 one, one. So that's x to the power of five, four, three, two, and that's x to the power of one is one and one. Okay, that's no problem. Okay, so everybody is okay with, with generators and you know how to use them in a division. Right. We go to the last error detection. Or might go on an example for having code, but let's do the some need to get this online just one sec, please. Checks on. Yeah, yeah, we've done that, we've done this. Ch -ch 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 -ch. All right, the next one is called the checksum. Error detection system. This is probably one of the most used ones as well. And this is simple and fast and easy. And this involves additions. You just take the first byte, add it to the second byte, keep adding them. 
that's one's complement addition. I mean, so you only add one bite to another bite. Anything extra, you know, add it again so you always have one bite at the very end. So it's two, it's, it's one's complement addition. Let's have an example. And when, whatever you have at the end, complement it, and then send it at the end of, at the end of the frame. Let's say a frame has the following values. One, zero, one, 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 two, four, six, eight, Another byte, let's say zero one zero one zero zero two four five six seven eight. Another byte, three bytes. Um, two four six seven eight. There we are. So we're going to send this frame, and this could have hundreds of bytes or thousands of bytes. So this is how checksum works. We take the first byte, we add it to the second byte. We do one's complement. So I'm going to, put, to make it easier, I'm going to put this here and do the addition. So I'm just going to copy that, zero, one, zero, one. And follow me. Sometimes I make mistakes intentionally just to see if you're really following me or not, right? So, right, so that's the next one. One more zero, okay, one, two, okay. So it's zero, one, zero, one, that's four. Oh, this is nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there should be only, eight. there should be three zeros. Oh, so, oh yeah. See, I've already made a mistake and nobody saw it. <laughs> that was intentional. Okay. So what we do is we do an addition here. You start on the right hand side. Zero plus one. Everybody knows how to add binary? Okay. You'll learn it. So zero one. Zero. One. One plus zero is one. One plus one is two. How do you write two in binary? Binary, that's two. One on the left and zero here. So we put the zero here, and the one goes kind of, if you like, here. That's like adding five and five in our decimal number. You put zero and you carry the one, right? One plus one is another two, so we put a zero and you put one there. One plus one is the two. You put a zero, put the one there. One plus one is zero. And now carry the one you bring it here. Now, this is all kind of overflow. It's going outside the byte. So if there's something going outside the byte, you add it to this one here. You put it there and you add it to the rest of the byte. So one plus one is zero. And carry one. One plus zero is one. One. One, one, two, three, four, and that's it. So this is one's complement. So if there is an overflow, just add it to the point, the rest of the byte. Now bring in the next byte. That's two, four, six, eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, one. Now that's the next byte. And that gives us one. One plus one is two. One plus one is two. Plus two, one, zero, zero, zero. There's no overflow. Okay. Now, all we have to do at the end, when you finish the entire data, get us the complement of this. How do you get the complement? Just complement. That means just flip every bit. Flip each bit. How do you flip it? The one goes zero and the zero goes one. So if you add them together, they give you ones. Okay. Now, this is what we send 
with the frame. So the frame is that one there, those three bytes, plus this last byte at the end. So this byte at the end carries the sum of all the bytes of the frame, but with one's complement. So we just need not ignore the overflow, but add in the overflow as well. Now, to receive it, and I have the same frame. I'll just put one zero one 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 zero zero zero. I'll, I'll leave it here just so we can see the frame. So these are the three bytes that make up our frame. So the receiver receives this frame with this byte at the end. This complement byte, this one here, the checksum goes at the end of that frame. Just take it, it's there. So those, that first byte, and we add it to the next byte. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, oh, there should be four ones here. Okay, so we add them to the next one, the next byte, which is this one here, which is zero, one, zero, one, followed by three zeros and a one. One, two, three, and a one. So add them. So that's what the receiver does as bytes come in. Um, it's a very fast because it doesn't really add. It does whatever, you know, the, either ad adding or ad whatever the operation that happens, adding or oring. So it's a logical operation. It's extremely fast. Um, so adding them again, it's going to be like this. Zero, one, one. The result is the same one with four zeros, one, two, three, four, and an, an overflow of one. So we bring in, any time you get an overflow, you add it to the byte again. So one and one is two, followed by three ones, followed by four, one, four zeros. Now we bring in the last, the third byte, which is, Six zeros and a one, uh, six zeros and two ones. And we add them, and we, I already have the result here, so just so we won't make mistake. So th three zeros and a one, and a three zeros and a one. Now, with the frame comes the last byte that was added by the sender. This is not part of the frame, but we'll add it here, one, one, one zero, triple ones, and a zero. Okay, who's gonna help me at the very end? Give me the results, one plus zero. Keep going, the very end. Now, the receiver, just as the sender did at the very end, got a complement. So let's complement these. Get flip each bit. So when you flip the, all the ones, they'll turn into zeros. And if they're all zeros, we assume there is no error. So that's the way it works. If there was a, a bit error anywhere, let's get a, let's turn one of the bits in the frame. Remember, this is the frame that we received, followed by the last byte, which is this one here, by the sender. Let's just pick any bit and change it. Let's say this bit here got an error. So instead of zero, it turned into one. And let's see what will happen. How is it discovered? So first one, we get the first byte. We add it to the second byte. And that's what we get uh, up to here. Now, this is the byte with the change in it, zero, one, zero, one, one. So, what? Oh, oh, I need to change that. Zero, one, zero, one, and this bit here flipped into one. Might as well, okay, I'll do it here beside it. One, zero, four ones two zeros, and zero, one, zero, one, one. 
zero, zero, one. Now that's what happened. So that's a one, <coughs> a zero, a one, that's a two. Now one plus one plus one is three. How do you write three in binary? Okay, this is how to write one in binary. Two is written this way, and three is written this way in binary. I hope you know it. You should know it. So one plus one plus one is three. So that's one one. We put one here, we bring one, we carry one. One plus one is two. That puts a zero here, we carry one. Plus one is two. Put zero and carry one. Two, carry one. Now we have a number of here and we carry on. One plus one is two and the one goes there and the rest of them unchanged. So that's the first two bytes. Now let's get the third byte. Here's the third byte. Six zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six, and two ones. Adding them, one, one plus one is zero, zero, one, and three zeros. Now we get the final byte that was sent by the sender. That's the checksum byte, it's called. So it's one, 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 zero, triple one, and a zero. You add them up and it's one, one, one. One plus one is a two. Carry it to this one, it's one, it's one plus one is two. One plus one is a two. One plus one is another two, plus one is another two, plus one, and add one to it. And because two here, one plus one is two, two, another two, and one here, and then zero, 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 zero. And that's what we get. And it tells you A. Now, we have that, flip everything. We should, after flipping, we should get zeros. We did not get zeros, we got lots of ones. So it says, A, there is an error. Don't tell you where the error is, but we knew. We, we, we turned that bit. So that's if, if there was no error, or, and this one, if there is an error. So that's called the checksum. Questions? Yeah? Yeah, almost nowhere. For you have any value other than at the very end? Well, normally you get all ones and then you need to flip them. Yeah, so that that's means it's almost zero free. It's not 100%, but it's... Why do we need to flip them? Why do, why do we need to flip them? I don't know. This is the algorithm. That's the way, yeah? What if the checksum has an issue? Like, what if a bit in the checksum flips? <laughs> What's the what? what? What if a bit in the checksum flips? What's the reason? Uh, like, when, 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 when we pass the flip, uh, there is no issue. No problem. What if the checksum flips? <laughs> Okay, guys, the, the general idea is this. Okay, thank you. Shukriya. Kamush. Decimal system, just in our numbers. Let's say you're sending the following data. Let's say you're sending 20 
you're sending 30, 60, and 35. Our number, the biggest number we can have is 99 in, in just, so 20, 30 is 50, 85. Shh, guys, now you need the complement of this. Let's say the complement of this to make it 99 is 14. You add them, 99. So that's what we add to, to this number, to this data. 20, that's what the sender sends, 30, 35, and 14. So when the receiver receives this, adds them all together, finds them 99. If you add all these, there'll be 99. Uh, flip them, turn them, you know, complement, whatever it is, 99 is okay, it's perfect. It goes zeros, so there's no complement to 99. Zero complements 99. That's like the coordinate of flipping there. We say there's no, no error, even though the 14 is not part of the data, right? So the data is only 20, 30, and 35. This is the extra last number it was sent by the sender to complement all these to make them 99. So if you get an error on this one, let's say this 14 changed into 12. Or, or, you know, higher or whatever. Then you're going to have here 97. Complement 97 to 99, it's 2. It's not a 0. What brings 97? So we say there is an error. Okay, the error is not in the actual real frame, but it happened, there's an error somewhere. We call all this frame, and we call this the user data. This is the CRC, if we are doing CRC, or the checksum byte at the end. So the frame contains all the data, but there is an error in the frame somewhere. So it doesn't necessarily have to be, even if it's the error is in this byte, then it's also considered an error in the frame. Okay, get a piece of paper or on your machine or whatever, work out this question. This is an exam question. It says generate Hamming code. So generate Hamming code, that means you're a sender. You're not a receiver. The receiver, you'll get the Hamming code ready. Now, no, we want to send data. We want to put Hamming code with it. So generate the whole frame, including the Hamming code the following data. So here's the data to be sent. Three ones, zero, one, zero, one, and then one, zero. Using even code, even Hamming code. Preparation to transmit to the sender. So I'd like you to start. And if you have no piece of paper, I'll give you a piece of paper. Nobody needs a paper. Okay, you'll have five minutes to do it and then I'll do it. Yeah, read it carefully. This is what you get in the exam. So you have to decide is this sender or receiver? Can you see that or am I making it? Okay, you can That's nice to see. You should create a table first of any. You need to add the parity bits. Parity 1, parity 2, parity 4, parity 8. 
So at least you're going to have those kind of things. That's what I So you draw a table. I suggest the first thing you do is draw a table. Thing I think you should, you need is throw a table. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Maybe eleven will do. I just number them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now you put in the data here. First, define where are the parity bits. This is a parity bit. One, two, where's the other one? Do you remember the other parity bit? Four, eight, 16, 32, and so on. Okay. So now fill in the data. Put this data into the correct location. Where would you put the first bit one? In which column there? One and two are People at the back there, I don't know if you can see it. So I'm going to zoom a little bit here so we, and then we'll come back to it later. Is this okay there at the back? Yeah. So this column, that's parity one, that's parity two goes there, parity four, parity eight. You don't put data in there. So that data, you have to fill in the three spaces. Well, that's the first problem you need to solve. Put the data, put your data in the right place. So big data, the big number one, it goes here. Write it. If it makes you feel any better, you can say this one, parity one, that's parity two, that's parity four, and parity eight. And this is data one, data bit number two, data bit number three, data bit number four, data bit number five, data bit number six, and so on. So that data that we need to send, one, 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 goes here, one, 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 and fill the rest of the data. So that's the first thing you need to do. I'm going to fill by this part, one, 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 zero, one, zero, Zero. Zero, one, zero, one, one, zero. So that's number 12 and that's number 13. Now we have the data. The next thing is to find out P1. What value are you going to put in this column, in this square here? First, you have to pick the bits that go with parity one. It's, I gave you a technique, if you want to use it, for parity number one. You start at number column number one. You take that, skip one and take the next one. Skip one and take the next one. And when we go to number two, we start at number two. We take two columns, we skip two columns, we take two. And with the four, we start at column number four. We take four, five, six, seven, and eight, and skip four. Come on. 
And this one, again, we need an even parity code. Have you finished? Okay, let me confirm. Maybe another one. Anybody else finish? Okay, one sec. It looks like we're not Okay, this looks Where you start? Ask me if you don't know how to start. What's that? The zero or nine? Okay, I'm going to go through it, guys. For the parity one, this is parity one. What are we going to put there? A zero or a one? Kamush, kamush. We need to determine what bits go with parity one. Now I have somebody here to help me. Which, which columns of bits go with parity one? This one. Number one. Number three. Five. Seven. Nine. Eleven. And three. Right. Now we count them. How many ones there are without the parity? One, two, three, four. There are four. They are okay. So the parity should be a zero. So this one should go as a zero. Okay, next one. We go to parity number two. Who's gonna help me in there? Are you gonna try and give me a hand here? This is parity two. I'm gonna fi figure out what information goes in here. What bits are there? That's column number two. What other columns are with parity two? Okay, no, I want you to tell me. Work it out. You start at number two, you take two columns, and then skip the next two columns, and take two columns and skip two columns. So starting at number two, this one, and what other column? Column number three. So we bring the bit from column number three. And then skip two. That's four and five. We skip them, we go on six and seven. So we bring one and a zero here. And then, what are the next two columns? We skip 8 and 9. We take 10 and 11. And then we skip 12 and 13. Okay, so with number 2, you must start at number 2. Don't start number 1, start number 2. Take 2, skip 2, take 2, skip 2, keep doing that. And then count how many ones there are. There are 3. So. Zero, one, and then five and six, no, six and seven is one and zero, and skip eight and nine, and go ten and eleven, zero, one, and skip twelve and thirteen. So there are three, and because they are odd, in order to make them even, we need to make this one a one as well. So we put one there. And then, There, yeah. Okay, tell me. This is now, we finished with parity two. We want to go with parity four. Yeah. 
Where will I start? I have a volunteer there. The guy behind you, yeah, not the one with the red jacket, yeah. Yeah, that's you. Start with which column? Start with number four. So we go to number four, and then take now four columns. So we take four, five, six, and seven. Four we don't know, five is one, six is one, seven is zero, and then we, we skip four. Skip eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And we take number 12, and one and a zero. And you work it out. Then we find three. Also, three is an odd. So this one has to go into one to make it four. Okay, who's doing all the talking there? Yeah, you in the middle, yeah? We go with parity eight. Hurry up, hurry up. We start at eight. How many bits will we take? Eight. So we take eleven, twelve, thirteen. And we count, and there are three. So this one also has to go one to become four. And there we are. We've just worked out what bit values they are going to be. And now you need to write the new data that's going zero, one, 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 zero followed by five ones, and then zero, double one, and then zero, double one, zero. And that's the frame that will be sent to the sender. You should know this one is not part of the user data. Now this one is not, number one, number two, number four is not part of the data. And this one, number eight. Not the screen. Not the screen. Okay. Okay. That's. Okay. So this is the entire thing. Time to go. Yeah? Okay. Let me just take attendance and watch out for a tutorial. If I get time, I might put tutorial. So keep a look at your Moodle, guys. Too much noise.